welcome to Strictly Biz News. I am here with Jill Munson and Hunter Golden, Jill from Inspired Marketing and Hunter from Right Stuff Copywriting. Yes, and uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we have a few good topics to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about five things Lady Gaga can teach marketers about community building. Yep. Uh, U.S. charges Swiss Baker for helping rich Americans. PayPal reports 12 million Facebook users pay for games. Google draws 25 million visitors a month. Google Plus draws 25 million visitors a month. And four square added pages for brands. First thing we're going to talk over is uh, Lady Gaga can teach t marketers. This is from Inc. I don't know how this... All right. So... The five things are, it's just funny, and I, the five things are target like-minded individuals, be vulnerable, treat the consumer like your boss, create a collective experience, and become a better company through community. I don't know how Gaga really uses any of it. I, are you kidding me? Okay. First of all, do you know who Lady Gaga is? Yeah, of course. Okay. I'm okay. just checking. Yeah. I'm a gringo. I might be out of the Cretaceous period. <laughs> I hadn't seen you. I am you cool. Know, busting a I may easily. like swing music. So I may still think that's cool, but I know who Lady Gaga. Lady, Lady Gaga has her little monsters. Yeah. Right? right. Okay. So little monsters are her fans. So right there, that's her community and everything she does. I mean, she named her tour after them. So she focuses on her consumer. Yeah. And I, I think if that. more businesses did that, instead of businesses tend to build a brand and or build a product and then push their product or their brand force it on their consumer to the consumer yeah. versus taking the consumer and figuring it out and it was interesting this article from fast company was talking about the wires mm -hmm. and the wires are the ones they it, they see through they want authenticity period and if it's the whole thing with like facebook and um you know back to like obama and the different campaigns like they want to see the truth. They, if you're dishonest, you're done. But if you're loyal, if you're if you're authentic, authentic, authentic. Good thing I didn't make a career with my mouth, huh? <laughs> um, if you're authentic to them, they will be loyal to you. So I think that this is this is onto something. Well, I agree. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I think you know, marketing now is community building. Yeah. Um, if you look at the brands that are successful, it's the brands that have been able to embrace what their core audience is looking for and making them active participants in that brand. If you've looked at just what a hot company right now that's uh, seen a big increase in their television ratings and their merchandise sales and pay-per-view revenue over the course of the last two months, it's been uh, the WWE. Which oh, I knew you were going uh, there. <laughs> you gotta, but they've been using social media. They've had this you know, huge drawn out yep. storyline where you know this one of their wrestlers who just won the belt apparently got fired, and he's showing up at Comic Con, and they're doing YouTube videos, and and you know fans are being able to engage Have in what they're seeing. Ridiculous celebrities on there, and yeah. Well, look at Domino's latest latest string of ads is oh. about everything that they screwed up, and and it shows it shows an an era of authenticity. Back in the 1950s and 60s, it was okay. Well, let's present a brand and present this image, and now with the internet, it's really taken the power of marketers to control an image away from them and put it in the hands of the consumer. You can build a product all you want, mm -hmm. okay? If that's a crappy product, not only are people going to talk about it, they can't just call your old consumer hotline, not talk to anybody, hang up and just be frustrated and tell their neighbor. Now they'll go online, they'll go to a review site, they'll even dedicate entire websites to killing that product and telling everybody well, also, that it sucks. The audience is like, it used to be like, tied and Tide or like Maxwell House Coffee. And there was a product or two that led the industry. Yeah. Now the audiences are so fragmented and sectioned off that you have all these different little niche markets that you have to cater to because your overall arcing product isn't going to satisfy. I mean, even the big dogs, like if you look at McDonald's, McDonald's knows that it can't just be the Big Mac anymore. Yeah. McDonald's now has to be the salad and the nutritional happy meal and for what their overall consumer base wants. Yeah, you know? and one of the things that she mentioned was treat the consumer like your boss, and like in her words, throw out the red carpet for them. And that's one thing mm -hmm. a lot of big brands, some do do that, some don't. A lot of them, a lot of the big brands and the big companies, they're more so, you know, what how we can make the bang, get the buck. And with a lot of other companies, Lady Gaga is pretty much like a company. She has all these things that go on. She's working with the Kodak, I think, too. Yeah. Uh, She's got like, what was the number? Some, some zillions of 35 million Facebook friends and 10 million Twitter followers. I mean, yeah, she so is a brand unto herself. Exactly. So she's, that's one way a lot of big companies 
even other celebrities, they don't realize, you know, the power of their community. It's well, engaging. I, think, I think it's engaging. You know, I, I want to. That was the one point where I kind of slammed on the brakes there because, uh, you know, I think that could be misconstrued as, you know, the customer's always right. And that is no, absolutely no. not the case. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, 99 times out of 100, the customer has no idea what they want. But they want just, you to tell them what to want. But, but it's, it's about engaging them and making them a participant in the process towards formulating an end product and, and being okay with the fact that they're not going to be 100%, like you were saying, 100% satisfied with your product. It's responding it's too, a, though. Like exactly. A lot of my clients will ask me, they'll be like, oh, God, like social media, that allows customers to say something bad. It's okay. Yeah. Customer you may have a bad experience, but if the customer says it and you deal with it, me as an outside consumer goes, hmm, that's somebody who deals with the problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm willing to look at that. So I, th I think she's brilliant. And I say, you know what? You were born this way, baby. It's okay. So the U.S. charges Swiss banker for helping rich Americans evade taxes. So a U.S. UBS banker indicated by the federal prosecutors in Florida providing offshore tax evasion services to wealthy Americans. So Martin Lack, a Swiss national who served as executive director of USB Lifetime North American. Movie. Sorry. Martin Lack? It's perfect. He's gonna they're gonna make a movie. Go on. Okay. <laughs> so pretty much this guy was taking the rich people in America and putting them in Swiss bank accounts. There really are there really is a thing called Swiss bank accounts. And that's the guy who was doing this, putting money in there so they wouldn't get taxed on it. And America found out. Go USA. <laughs> is there anything more American than tax evasion? Yeah. Honest to God, I mean, Americans have been trying not to pay taxes since the British were trying yeah. to make us pay taxes. I mean, I don't the think there's anything party. fundamental. No. But on a serious note, though, with the, my, the one question Wait, I have with the story. you're going to have a serious note? Uh, I do. Sorry. Uh, Semi-serious note. Uh, but one of the, uh, the interesting thing I thought about the article is they didn't really mention what those assets were. Yeah. I mean, is, it, is this a yacht? I mean, if they're, if they're hiding the value of their yacht over... In Switzerland, that they've already bought it. That means they've already paid the taxes. Yeah. On that asset, that was my one big. Thing. That was my one big question. That was like, oh, who cares if they have an asset? They've already paid the taxes to purchase that asset. See, and what, if they're keeping it somewhere else, why is it? What, what's so funny is that's what you read into it. The nice, the deep, the you know. And I read that there's this 81 year old guy who's got a lot of money, yeah. and maybe is going to pass soon. So if I could meet him, I mean, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know what? I mean, this, this guy's 81 years old, and he admitted to <laughs> hiding 26 million in order to avoid paying taxes. Uh, hiding 26, it's like hiding, like, it's not like hiding it in your mattress, it's a crap load of money. How do you? Well, it's actually in quarters, too. No, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> <laughs> nine well, point, water so he, yeah, paid, he paid 9.8 million in fines, and, you know, and so I thought he was off the hook, but he also faces 15 years in prison. So I know he's going to want conjugal visits. Yeah. He's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, can they real, uh, what's I his mean, name? I, I can't find his name. Uh, I his old, name. Man, old rich man Joe, uh, you can find her at 1-800-GOLD-DIGGER. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's not a gold digger situation. It's She wants to be, She wants you to be her good sugar daddy. Um, let's I'm go. Just saying. Uh, PayPal reports 12 million Facebook users pay for games. Uh, there's overall there's about 750 million Facebook users altogether, and 12 million of them pay for games. So this is the farm bill, the mafia wars, uh, the everything I don't like seeing in my Facebook. Yeah, page. exactly. I I, hate I I don't want to crop anyone's garden, and I don't want to join anyone's mob. I don't want to deal with any of that crap. I don't want I mean, to get stabbed in the face by Alfonso's posse or anything yeah, like that. It's no. not a fun time. I, if I want someone to go swim, swimming with the fishes, I will literally do it, not well, do it through Facebook. Alfonso Santanello, we know this. But <laughs> love you. <laughs> We're going out for pasta afterwards. Yes. Um, so I don't do any of the um, the games that include like on Facebook. I hate those too. I block yeah, them. No, but I do. Words with friends. Yes. Uh, of okay. And I paid for words with friends. Yeah. Because I wanted the no. better, like, and yeah. You don't do words with friends? No. no that's over the phone, though. It's not so much over Facebook. They're talking about crap through Facebook mind. that people are paying. Well, yeah, you can do that. Uh, people's life crises. It's like. My favorite are the people that are having direct conversations with people without ever naming them. Like having these, these like, statements. It's like, I know that you're conspiring against me in the. the it's like, I know you're okay. hiding or who you're behind. Can I just <laughs> say that I am friends with Hunter Golden on Facebook, and if he posts about baseball, That's one, awesome. I love baseball, but I don't want to hear about I it do. every 12 seconds. I can you watch don't. the game. I don't need to see your posts. Ooh, he just posts. hit the ball. Ooh, he's running. Ooh, he's rounding first. Ooh, he's rounding second. I didn't say that. You okay, know. so according to the I comment... I commented on, Terry, on Kevin Uglis getting kicked out of the game last week. 
According to PayPal, 40% of adults play online games, 70% of gamers are PayPal users, and 62% are virtual goods purchased in North America involve PayPal transaction. So, Do you use I, PayPal? No. You don't use PayPal? No, nope, I use everything I do is strictly on just credit card, and that's about it. I just do don't. you use PayPal? Not necessarily. Very, just, not a lot, no. Really? Interesting. Do you? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, I do not trust putting all that. No, I mean, I'm, I'm a big... I'm paranoid. I'm, I'm paranoid just putting my credit card. I don't even mind. trust you to hear with me now. I don't trust I'm you one of those recording people, this with me. I'm one of those people all the time who's like, <laughs> I'm so bad, I'll be like to the intern, I'll be like, hey, can you go grab me lunch? And she's like, sure. And I'm like, here's my debit card. The code is, and I'm not going to say it because I'm not that dumb, but I'll give her my the card and like in the code and she'll run it off. And- so Joe is looking for an intern. I'm looking for a gold intern and an intern who's willing to go get me lunch. I mean... Um, next up, Google Plus draws 25 million visitors a month, and it was launched in the first week of June. They are the fastest growing social network. Um, there's a lot of people who, who are not on board because they don't understand its purpose. Um, it is a beta only site, right? Yes. That, right. right now, it's only you have to be invited through it, someone that's a user already. So should I they, feel like a, a loser? It's like the I, can, I can invite you if you want. It's like the skulls of social media. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like I'm the kid on the, on the bench really at school. Though, this is like the their third or fourth or attempt at a social networking site, and I think they've done, this is the, the one. So you're on it? I'm on it. So what they did is when they had launched it in the first week or second week of June, they gave invites to maybe a couple hundred people. And then from there... How did you get an invite? No, I I didn't get the first round of invites. Oh, thank God. From there, it was... was, I got it after that. I still accepted it. It was... From there, the people that had invites were allowed to give out invites. But then, Google did something where they block off the invites. It's like not being invited to the So, Google leave an open window for two hours to people invite people, and then they'll cut off the invites. So, they left it and for about two week period. Left it where it's like people wanting it, but they can't give out the invites. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say with this? Yeah, it's like... So, they're like, mind game. Like they're the, like... Yeah. They're mind screwing people yeah. <laughs> so the other, mind screwing people it's like I want this and they can't get it and now it's like waiting for somebody to call after a good date like you know you're waiting yeah. and waiting and waiting yeah. except you don't know that you went on the date yeah I gotta say it's a lot cleaner than Facebook it's like blacking out on your first date they have um, not it's not Skype it's video capabilities where you can have 10 people in on one conversation um, is this another thing I have to do though yes yes you know why the reasons why I like because it's Google. It's going to help your SEO. I type in my full name. I'm number three. I type in I type in my first name. I'm number three. I type in my full name. I'm number one. Once they start... On Google Plus or on... on Google, in Google search because I have my Google Plus account. Now, it, when they launch the business pages... It will help me meet the my business old page, 81-year-old man. <laughs> the business pages haven't launched yet. So when the business pages launch, that's also going to help the, the website search. So now I have to... Facebook. I yes. have to link in. Yep. I have to twat or tweet yep. or whatever. I have to. Yeah. And I have to. And now I have to Google Plus. Yeah. I'm See, tired. But, but this. When do I have Plus, time to do your show? Plus. I mean, this is this is like. But you know, here's the thing. And I'm, I'm a marketer. You're a marketer. You're a marketer. We got three marketers sitting at the table here. Pretty scary. Oh, first. <laughs> marketer, marketer, marketer. It, it's one of those things, and and, and maybe I I don't know. But I have a very adversarial relationship with social media, new forms of social media at first. Like, I, I'm kind of like Jill. I mean, I get, I get angry about it. I'm like, this is, this is more crap that I have to do in my yeah. day now. This is another stupid profile pic that I have to upload that doesn't make me look like an idiot or make me look like a bigger idiot. <laughs> um, you know, it's more, more photoshopping to, to blend out my, can I say ass? Yeah. To blend out my ass. That's what I mean. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's all this stuff. And then I start, you know, when I get into it, I really get into it. I mean, I found that Twitter, I, I thought Twitter for the first two to three months of its existence was about the most fundamentally stupid idea that we've ever come up with. I'm like, wow, they just took the, you know, your status box from Facebook and transplanted it See, I onto a social it. network. But now... I love it. I mean, I'm on here having conversations with James Buster Douglas earlier this year. Was the last year was the uh, tenth? It was the twentieth anniversary of him knocking on Mike Tyson. And uh, I was like, I wonder if Buster Douglas. But see, I have a Twitter question. How, 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 about how, on Mike Tyson. how do you know? How do you know it's not just John Smith, the loser, who verified who account? You can verify accounts. Verified account. You have a verified really, account. It's really them. I have a verified account. Yeah, I've verified it. Well, account. thank God you have a verified account because because I have a, when I you're have a people, double, I have a double runner on this area. That does not surprise me because no, I am a twin though. Are you really a twin? Yes, I am. 
didn't so know that. What's no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear to God on my twin. I swear <laughs> to God on my No, I twin. am. I am. I really am. There's the really awesome. Yes. What's he his name? Sal. Oh, that is You can ask the Jensen's. We all went to high school together. It's just when you thought the world couldn't get any better, there's two of them. That makes it even better. Uh, oh. Alright guys, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we'll be right back. Welcome to Strictly One on One. I am here with Laura from Pioneer Valley Leadership. Laura, thank you so much for coming on. Um, for the viewers that don't know, what is Leadership Pioneer Valley? Leadership Pioneer Valley is a new um, nine-month training program for emerging leaders here in the Valley. Um, our goal is to identify, engage, and connect new um, emerging leaders and existing leaders to benefit the whole Pioneer Valley, um, both with leadership skills, connecting people for better networking, and then getting more involved civically so that we have a stronger region as a result. So how did... Um the leadership group, how did, how did it start? Good question. Mm -hmm. um, coming out of the plan for progress from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, one of the things I identified was the need for a leadership program for the region. Um, this was in 2004. Nobody really picked up that gauntlet. Um, it kind of laid stagnant for the last few, you know, decade almost. Um, the Hampshire, um, the Northampton Chamber of Commerce six years ago did a Hampshire only program. They tried to get the other counties involved and one by one they dropped out. Um, and that was really kind of the, the beginning of this process. And then um, my chair of my steering committee, David Woods, had been in Washington, D.C. and run across the program in, um, in D.C. called Leadership Greater Washington. Really was excited about the program, brought it back, talked to a few folks, including Alan Blair, and said, let's do this about a year ago. So they've been pulling together a really diverse um, steering committee from throughout the community, and now we've got 25 people, uh, and I was hired in April to get it get it launched, so oh. that's what we're doing. So what is, so if um, someone's interested in applying, what's the process like? It's really, really difficult. We make sure that the bar is without... Um, <laughs> We're, we're just finishing up our application process. We may be able to take a few additional people, so if there's anybody out there who's really interested, um, please contact me. It's a pretty simple application program process, uh, all online. So we're trying to be, you know, 21st century. <laughs> um, but first, the applicant needs to fill out a application, uh, which is a lot of personal information, and, and including a few short essays. Um, the second piece is a participant commitment form. This is a form that's filled out with the employer if you've got one, just to make sure that folks are aware of a time commitment and a financial commitment to the mm -hmm. program. And the third is just a sponsor application so that your employer or someone who's nominating you says this person is great. Um, so, we, you know, it's basically a reference form. Uh, what's the website if, uh, so they can go and get more information or if they want to apply? It's www.leadershippv, P as in pioneervalley.org. So. And so why should um, people apply for it? You know, it's, we're really going to take people, teach them really key leadership skills um, mm -hmm. to make sure that um, you've got the skills that you need to, to be the leader that you want to be within your own company or organization. Uh, it's a really great networking opportunity. Um, we're going to make sure that we're networking both among the participants but also with leaders from throughout the valley. And part of the program, we're going to go to locations all around the valley to meet you know, political leaders, community leaders, as well as business leaders. So people have a really good 360 view of the valley, the challenges and assets of an area. Um, so networking is going to be a key component. You know, and, and last is really the, the civic responsibility. Um, you know, we're really going to push folks to get involved after they get out of this, whether it be on a board of directors, um, starting a new organization, or good, getting more involved in something you've already been doing. We'll be doing an alumni program to make sure that um, folks are continue to be involved and, you know, we'll continue to give opportunities to, to make the region a better place. Great. Is there anything else you want to, um, last comment you want to tell the viewers about leadership? 
We're really excited about the program, and um, we've been really well received by you know business community, nonprofits, as well as the public sector. It's really great to see everybody getting behind this. And you know, I live in in Greenfield and work down in Springfield now. And, and the number of times that you know I run across folks who don't know much about, don't get out of Springfield mm -hmm. up into the Upper Valley or vice versa until we really start breaking down those walls and understanding the valley, but also bringing people from the different sectors together, we're not going to be able to tackle some of these big regional program, um, problems that we're facing. You know, we want to get people who are committed to the valley, to building it and staying here instead of going to Boston to build your career somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So we think this is a pro pro uh, program that can do that, and we're excited to work with folks. Great. Laura, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we'll be right back. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No problem.